I'm Jeff Boyle. I'm uh, originally from Sioux City, Iowa, and um, I started at Avera as a neurologist with an interest in sleep medicine approximately four years ago. Now I'm medical director of the Brookings Sleep Lab. Obstructive sleep apnea is a condition um, where a person will stop breathing um, uh, more than five times per hour is, is how it can be most simply put. Generally when people pause their breathing, their oxygen goes low and then um, they'll wake up and that just disrupts the sleep and then if they don't wake up, if they just sort of um, live down in a lower oxygen level, then it's just hard on the body in general, but really hard on the heart and the brain, which never really stop working. They're always kind of going, they always need blood and oxygen. And so that's why I worry about strokes and heart attacks in, in these sorts of, of um, patients. Sleep apnea generally is, is caused by one of two problems. One is, is weight, that there's just a lot of weight around the neck or the back of the throat um, or over the, the chest. And so the breathing becomes obstructed because of, of um, tissue within the, the oropharynx, the nose and mouth, that sort of get in the way. The other uh, factor that seems to be involved in sleep apnea is just the kind of the anatomy and that's why I think people um, see that their parents have sleep apnea and then and then their you know siblings have sleep apnea and then they wonder if they have it and that's because of you know we look similar and, the, and our face is similar to those um, people around us and the tongue in the back of the tongue whether that sits uh, where that sits in relation to the the soft palate and the, the, the dangly thing in the back of our throat called the uvula. And that's, I think, where we kind of run into problems and people have obstruction because that's just the way they're built, whether they're um, heavier set or even thin people can have it. So. so there's different aspects or different ways that sleep apnea can be dangerous. Um, the first and, and kind of most evident for people is that if they're really sleepy during the day, and they do something, you know, involving driving or working with heavy equipment, or if they um, are monitoring uh, something that is dangerous, and they fall asleep during these these um, activities, it can have some really dire consequences. So the the long-term effects of untreated obstructive sleep apnea really um, uh, manifests as, as heart disease and kind of brain disease. Um, I worry about strokes and heart attacks. The oxygen needs to supply the heart muscle, and if it's low, the heart muscle won't work very well. The brain also will feel that and say, you know, I need, I need more blood, I need more oxygen. We have things to do, you know, to regulate the body, and the brain's always going, even in sleep. The first is, is probably snoring. Somebody that snores uh, loudly, especially, that somebody has to, their bed partner, whoever there's, they're sleeping with has to go in another room that's a that's a really a big red flag and then you know if you're not sleeping well if your oxygen's kind of going low and you're waking up or or having disrupted sleep you'll be excessively sleepy during the day and then somebody who's just more irritable you know if somebody uh, if a, a person gained weight or um, had uh, some sort of event related to heart disease or like a heart attack or lung disease like emphysema or a, um, pneumonia, they can have trouble there and then that will um, can make a, their uh, sleep apnea worse. The most common test is an overnight polysomnogram or a sleep study. A sleep study is, is uh, it's traditionally been done in the hospital or some sort of other um, hospital-like setting and it's an overnighter test. It's one of the longest uh, diagnostic tests you can have in, in medicine, I think. So the sleep study um, has multiple sensors um, involving oxygenation of the blood and um, respiratory effort if you're trying to breathe and, and there's no air passing through um, the nose or mouth that's, and that's um, uh, indicative of apnea or a cessation of breathing. Um, we measure other things too, like the stages of sleep that people are in. So if somebody says, I just don't feel like I'm getting a good night's sleep or a deep sleep, we can tell if a person is having a deeper sleep. Obstructive sleep apnea is treated using continuous positive airway pressure. It's a lot of words. It just means that um, if you pressurize a system, um, then you can keep it open so that that pressure seems to keep the tongue out of the way and the throat open and the soft palate out of the way and so you, you, breathe, you breathe better. Um, CPAP is used in mild, moderate or severe sleep apnea 
It is extremely effective, and I can take a person who's stopping, um, you know, pausing their breathing every 10 seconds and really severe sleep apnea, and I can make it so their, their oxygen level is steady in the 90s all night. I mean, it's just amazing what the change you can you bring with, with CPAP. Other treatments are available. You'll hear um, advertisements for oral mandibular advancement devices, and these are sort of like um, oral retainers or something you can put in your mouth that sort of brings the, the, the chin forward and, the, and it, the back of the tongue is sort of attached and that pulls out and that will also open up the airway. One of the first things that you'll, you'll feel um, once obstructive sleep apnea is treated is just more energy the next day and less fatigue. Um, certainly it takes time to get used to CPAP therapy if that's the therapy um, that you're, you're going through. Um, but um, many times on the, on the questionnaire that we use after the sleep study, people will say, oh, I, I, the best night, um, I, had the be I slept the, as best as I ever have during the sleep study because we use the CPAP during that study. Over time though with CPAP, that daytime sleepiness really gets better and um, studies have shown that it really takes months to really reach that plateau where, where you get to be more normal um, you know, daytime sleepiness. Over the long run, years and years, um, there's um, evidence and, and uh, theories that, that strokes and heart attacks and other vascular events are decreased in people that have treated their obstructive sleep apnea. The technicians are, are doing these sleep labs every night and, and really very patient and, and, um, and thoughtful in the, in, this, in the procedure. The quality of the, the sleep lab or the sleep study is excellent. We have uh, um, all the data that we need to make an accurate diagnosis and, and really determine what's going on and, and how we can help.